Welcome everyone again to the Hemophilia Council of California's Advocacy and Public Policy webinar, saying hello to telehealth. Um, my name is Lynn Kinst. I'm the Executive Director of the Hemophilia Council, and I'm glad to have you join us today. So with that, um, before I turn it over to Peter, Peter and Paula, I just want to give a brief brief update um, from a policy perspective about what has been happening with telehealth. Um, as many of you may be aware, um, during COVID-19, telehealth was made much more accessible and also became much more popular. Um, you know, the, the percentage of patients that have used telehealth um, for any type of medical visit has just skyrocketed in the past you know, 12 to 15 months. And um, as a result of that, um, advocates have been working to seek to ensure that the, that the flexibilities that were put into place that allowed that to occur um, during the pandemic continue um, so that people can continue to have this, this great access to medical care and treatment um, via telemedicine. So at the beginning of the year, back in January, the governor's original budget proposal did include provisions which would extend many of the flexibilities that allowed telehealth to flourish, um, but it didn't include all of them. So the primary difference was between sort of what's happening currently as a result of COVID and the governor's proposal was that um, the governor's proposal focused on extending the flexibilities surrounding um, telehealth technologies that involved video and, and not so much those telehealth visits that were audio only or telephonic visits. Um, but the, there were a lot of advocates that were concerned about that. There is an, an understanding that um, you know, some of the folks that are most likely to use telephonic or audio only um, telehealth visits are those that might not have access to broadband internet or the devices that they need in order to be able to have video visits may also um, end up excluding, you know, some elderly or other vulnerable populations who, again, may not be as familiar or comfortable with some of the technologies. And so because of that, and because of some great advocate um, advocacy work on the part of a number of, of groups and coalitions, the um, in both the Assembly and the Senate, the budget committees voted to include additional flexibilities that were contained in some legislation, AB 32, that would include telephonic and audio only visits as well as, um, as the telehealth provisions that the, budget, that the governor originally had in his budget. So the final determinations are still pending because the, the, the final budget has not been voted on. Um, the legislature has until June 15th, so just about another week a little less than another week in order to vote on that. And then some of these items actually may be um, contained in budget trailer bills. So those are, you know, pieces of legislation that end up getting voted on after the budget is actually voted on. Um, so in the next, probably before the end of June, all of those trailer bills will be voted on and the governor needs to sign the budget by the end of the month because it goes into effect on July 1. And so um, there are still, you know, some final negotiations, but um, it is looking very positive that a lot of, of what we have seen occur this last year around telehealth is going to be allowed to continue, which, you know, here at the council, we believe that that's a positive for patients. Um, you know, there's definitely some appointments that you really need to go in and see your practitioners in person um, for them to be effective, but we know many of you have to go long distances in order to get to your hemophilia treatment centers, for example. And so we really think that, um, you know, the treatment centers and the doctors and the nurses and the, and the physical therapists there should have the flexibility to be able to make the determination with the patients when they think they can resolve something via a telehealth visit, whether that's, you know, via video or whether that's an audio visit. Um, versus having a patient drive in 
um, to the clinic or the office in order to be seen. And so um, we think that that's a positive and, and we're looking forward to being able to provide an update soon, kind of how that all um, pans out in the coming weeks. Um, I also briefly wanted to thank um, the, our webinar series sponsors, Takeda, Biomarin, HF Healthcare, and Sanofi Genzyme, who um, make this program possible. Um, and so with that, I just want to thank all of you for joining us today. Um, again, if, if you have issues or concerns, um, we're happy to help you here at the Hemophilia Council. So please don't hesitate to reach out to you, us if we can be of assistance. And um, thank you again to Peter and Paula. I know you guys have a very busy clinic schedule working with patients. So we appreciate your time putting this presentation together and joining us today. Well, thank you for having us. It was a pleasure. Thank you all for being here and uh, we will see you next month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.